Bible is full of stories, real life stories, real people. There's no glossing over their life, real problems. Some of them were so flawed, character wise. And the Bible doesn't gloss over. It says, this is what it was, this was his problem. This is what he did. And sometimes we are so embarrassed reading it. Oh man, how could this guy do this? Real problems. Every real life story in the Bible is an invitation. An invitation for the Lord to come in and do it again. Do what he did for those people in our times, in our day, in our lives. And personally saying, Lord, do it again for me. He changed my name. So every time somebody called, every time Sarah would call me Abraham, I'd be reminded of the promise of God. I'm reminded of the promise of God. I'm reminded of my conversation with God. I'm reminded of my encounter with God. So I believe Abraham would talk to us, some of us, you know, as he's holding on to the mic and he's saying, guys, I want to tell you, you know, is, I want to ask you this question. Is anything too hard for the Lord? You know, I walked with him for two and a half decades and I, all I had was a promise. And all I could see was the stars and all I could hear was my name being called and reminded of the promise. And he would say, is anything too hard for the Lord? Joseph is away from home. He's away from church. He's away from fellowship. He's away from life group. He's away from a, you know, anything that you can call a holy or spiritual environment. He's in a pagan nation. He's in this household. And this woman is seducing him. And it, not, it doesn't happen just once, but it happens day after day after day. And he says one thing. He says, you know, my master, Potiphar, he doesn't know anything about this house. He trusts me so much. He's given me the keys for everything. And you are his wife. How can I do this great injustice against God? Joseph is in prison. And he's doing an excellent work. And I believe he would testify and he would, he would tell some of us. Now, wherever you are, you know, do your best. Be excellent. Hold on to your integrity. When we are going through those seasons, tough times, and, and, and you, maybe there are more questions than answers, hold on to your integrity and hold on to what God has called you to do. And I believe he would say, what the enemy means for evil, God will turn it around for good. As I was with that father figure, with that mother, so I will be with you. He says, I will be with you wherever you go. Only do not be afraid. Be of good courage. Do not be fearful. Be of good courage. And Peter cannot take it. He just drops down in front of the Lord Jesus and says, Lord, just go away, God. Just go away. Depart from me. You know, in your presence, I just realize my sinfulness. All my limitations and everything. Oh, it just comes to me. Just go away, God. Depart from me. And the Lord says, Peter, you follow me. Peter, you follow me. For in you following me, I'm going to be making you into all that you are meant to be. The woman at the well would say, Jesus told me all that I ever did. I can't stop talking about him. Now I know what it means to truly live. Jesus did not condemn me. He forgave me instead. He restored my dignity. He restored my dignity. I can finally lift my head up and walk. Can you allow him to script your story? Can we ask him to script our story? He's the greatest writer. He's the greatest poet. He's the greatest director. Can we allow him to script our stories if we have not asked him to do so? But even if we have, can we invite him, allow him to come into those moments, come into those areas and say, Lord, what you did, then do it again, God. I heard Abraham. I heard Joshua. I heard Joseph. I heard all these guys. I heard this lady speak, God. Would you do it again in my life? You know, our story actually finds significance in his story. And his story is the gospel. Our story, when it becomes part of that, it's significant. Very significant. In the light of his story, 
our story becomes significant.